Welcome everyone, it's Dr. Mercola helping you take control of your health. And today I'm joined with a new friend, Mark Moss, and I am speaking at his live event in Miami. I'm really excited to do so because Mark is a special human being. He's really smart, first of all, and he's also passionate about some really important topics like how that, that but I just typically don't talk about on the site other than, I mean, it's passionate about freedom and liberty, but he's also passionate about wealth. And that's something that, you know, I don't really discuss because I focus on health and health. And right. we're both in agreement on this is your greatest wealth. So that's, I just stick with that. But obviously that's an important component of the whole picture, especially, especially in light of what's happening now, because so many of us are likely to lose our jobs. Right. Because we're restricting it, isn't it? I mean, and and you, they, they have an executive order by the president saying that if you're a company that has more than 100 pe- people, you're going to have to mandate it. And you say, well, that's okay. My employer's not going to do it. Well, if he doesn't, the initial fine was like fourteen thousand. Now, in the most recent form of the legislation, it's up to seven hundred thousand dollar fine for each occurrence. Yeah. So there is there's virtually no company that can sustain those types of federal penalties. So the the end result is they are going to implement it, and many of you, many of you are going to lose your, lose your job. So you need resources, strategies, ideas to work around this because believe me, there's not a micro doubt in my mind. Losing your job is a far better outcome than getting that jab. Yeah. You or your kids, especially your kids. So anyway, that's a, that's a bit of a tangent. But but if you're interested in some of these things, I would encourage you to come and see me speak. I don't speak very much. I literally sp- sp- spoke at one other event this year. No, at one other public event. This is the only other public event I'm speaking at all year. So uh, that's enough of a preface. I'm going to let Mark talk, get a little bit of his, bit of his history. And then yeah. after... Uh, You hear him talk, we're going to roll an interview he did with me just to give you a little bit more experience with what, how he communicates and and if you're interested in seeing us both at this live Miami event. Yeah, thanks so much, Dr. Joe Mercola. I uh, I, I love the intro and, you know, you're right that I do focus typically on finance and money. Um, I like to say that everything that you've learned uh, uh, is wrong. I try to change the way you think about money. And the reason why I focus on money um, isn't so we can just get rich and greedy and stockpile a bunch of money. I tell people it's for two reasons. One, so we can help other people. And two, so we can have options for our life, which is exactly what you're talking about. Um, you know, these people, unfortunately, we found lots of people um, when the pandemic broke out, didn't even have $400 saved. And so when you don't have that money, when you don't have those savings, you're stuck at a dead end job, right? If you had money saved, you could quit the job, go look for something else or to kind of with the point you just made. I mean, a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs or we're seeing a lot of people that are deciding to, and one of my good friends, one of my really good friends for over 20 years was in a situation at his job where he was being forced to be tested every single week. And they said, look, you either take it or you either take the jab or you, you keep being tested. And he decided to take the jab. He died five days later. Mm-hmm. Um, How old married he? A, a three-year-old kid. He was, he was uh, 49, 50 years old. Yeah. Um, he had just had a physical done six months before they said his heart was in perfect condition. Um, and, uh, you know, he was in a situation, he was forced to take it. And if he had money, if he had options, he would have had another choice. And so it's so important to have that also um, have options as far as where you live. Um, Some countries are being very, very strict and locking you down. If you had money, you could move to another jurisdiction that would treat you better. And so, uh, or maybe where you're at, it's okay. Um, But for example, I have some friends down in Mexico and they got locked in place and I was helping provide food to families that were down in those areas. So that's why we focus on money. It's not about being greedy. It's about having options. And as, as uh, Dr. Joe just pointed out, you're going to need to have those. And so uh, the financial system, sort of like the medical system, isn't really designed for your benefit. It's, been, it's, it's designed for the benefit of the people that run the system. And so once you can just start to look at things a little bit differently, and really it's a lot more simple than most people make it seem, you can start to build wealth 
um, you can start to then um, increase your freedom, your options and so forth. And so um, that's why I'm putting this event together. I wanted to bring it together about 15 people um, that are very passionate about freedom and what's happening over the next couple of years and talk about you know, what's happening from a political and a financial standpoint. And then more importantly, how we can build, grow and protect our wealth during this time. Of course, I also look at health as an asset. Uh, you can have all the money in the world, but if you lose your health, you have nothing. I also look at my freedom as an asset. Uh, if, if I have wealth, but I'm locked in my house, that does me no good. Um, and then, of course, we hear this, you know, the World Economic Forum with their 2030 agenda. You've probably heard it that, you know, you'll own nothing and be happy. And I'm not happy with that. And so we'll talk about asset protection strategies so you can keep your assets and they can't be taken away from you. Um, and, you know, I guess uh, you said I'm passionate and uh, part of the reason why I've really kind of shifted my message from just kind of focus on money to, to now m money and freedom is I have kids. I have kids, you know, and uh, they, the world economic forum has a plan for every area of my life, including I can't eat meat anymore. Supposedly I can't travel anymore. Supposedly uh, I'll own nothing. And I'm not okay with that. And I just figured, you know what? I'm not, I, this, I'm not okay with it. I don't want this for my kids. And if there's anything I can do, then I'm going to stop them. And so, you know, I'm bringing together some of the best people that will help you think through this, tell you what they think is going to happen. Most importantly, what you can do to protect yourself. Of course, Dr. Mercola talking about how we can protect our health um, during this time and really give you the tools you need to succeed and meet that community that you need to, to support you through those times. Yeah. So, and that's the key word you just said is community, because it's not that these 15 people are going to be transferring messages from the heavens to you to, to go to change your life. I mean, that may happen, but it more likely is the people you meet at the event. I mean, th this is not a virtual event. This is a live. You can touch, you can hug us, you can connect with us and, yeah. and not just us, but the people that are attending because they're all right. like minded. Right. And, and it's it's all about community. So I, I think and I and I thought about I thought benefit. about I thought about pushing this till next year because I kind of rushed it together. Um, and some people that are helping me are like, Mark, just push it to the first quarter of next year. But there is a, a potential that we may not be able to get together next year. Yeah, I mean, there's 100%. There's bills that are passed right now that want to prevent, prevent you from traveling even inside the United States. And so um, there, this is a live event. Uh, come meet people for real. Like you, like you said, hug us, shake, shake our hand, because you may not have the option to do that later. Yeah. And, and meet other people. It's, I really believe for many of you, it's going to be life changing. So if you can come down, it's going to be the second week, the middle of November. Miami's pretty nice that time. So it's going to be warm. I mean, many of you live up north. It's going to be a welcome relief. Uh, to get some more sunshine. And you could even go into the ocean, which is, I, I happen to live on the East coast of Florida. So I get a chance to do that pretty much every day. So I hope you'll join us down there. And then please be sure and watch the rest of this video where Mark interviews me and, and, uh, and uh, you might find it useful. So thanks for, for watching. Thanks so much. All right, Dr. Joe, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm excited to have you here. Well, it's great to be with you, Mark. Yeah. You know, I, uh, I, it, it's a little bit of a different topic than we typically talk about on mm -hmm. this channel. However, it's such an important topic, something that I'm super passionate about, which is my health. And I've been talking, really trying to expand on what I'm talking about because, um, you know, it's time, I've been saying it's time for people to look at freedom as an asset. It's time for people to look at health as an asset. And, you know, I talk about money, but without health, I mean, you have nothing. And mm -hmm. so uh, I'm super excited to have you on today um, and, and dig in. I know in my own life, just to kind of put things into perspective, um, I've recently found myself getting injured and that's held me back from a lot of things that I love. And I just, you know, no amount of money I have in my life offsets that. So it's important. Um, but I know that you are my friend who's a doctor um, told me last night, I can't believe you have Dr. Joe on. He's like the godfather of a naturopathic medicine. Of course, so I know who you are, but why don't you fill us in a little bit on your career, what you focus on and what you're doing? Yeah, I may not be familiar to many of your audience, but I'm a family board certified family physician and I've been passionate about health just like you uh, for but for a long time. I've been also passionate about technology about the same time since 1968. So that's 53 years. And uh, that's when I took my first computer class and really about when I started exercising. 
And I've been exercising ever since. I mean, I'm just passionate about it. And the key, the key to staying injury free is knowing how to exercise properly. <laughs> and, and not riding a dirt bike. Oh yeah, that's another strategy. You know, I, the risk to reward ratio for bike riding is just not there for me. So I've banded yeah. it a long time ago. So other the short trips to the beach. Yeah. As, as you might see in a video that we'll show at your event. <laughs> yeah. When CNN stalked me and followed me to the beach from my house. But I, I started in regular conventional medicine. I went to an osteopathic school, uh, which is a little more aligned towards natural therapies. And um kind of veered off in the mid nineties to embracing fully natural medical approaches. And, and uh, along with my passion for tech, I started my website. I was very early adopter. I started in 1997. This is before Google started their site. So I okay. had my site up before theirs. Uh, and I was one of the first people up on YouTube. Although uh, we'll talk about censorship in a bit. In a bit. They, they pulled my channel, all the, the thousands of videos I had up there over the years for no reason. Yeah. I mean, other than they made up a reason to justify yeah. it, but essentially no reason. So uh, my passion is about that. And it's evolved. It's just really seeking to provide people with the truth, the honest truth about how to stay healthy and, and avoid the pitfalls, the landmines that are out there that are usually a result of this corporate greed where they're sacrificing human health and life for their bottom line profits, uh, which is most egregiously represented by exactly what they've done with this <laughs> the last two years. Yeah. So, um, but, and I've been doing this for decades. Uh, I, I was one of the uh, first people to warn of like dangerous drugs, like Bi Biox, which uh, came out. I actually warned people in the last century, 1999, before it was actually launched on the market that it would kill people and it did and kill people. It did like 60,000 people died from the drug before Merck pulled it off. And they wound up getting about 25 billion in litigation against them, but they sell for much less. So that's what they do. I mean, almost every one of these drug companies are criminal entities. They've, they've had multiple billion dollar lawsuits against them for, mm -hmm. for injuring people. So, you know, my job has been to inform people at, and educate them to simple, inexpensive alternatives that really can solve the fundamental cause of the problem because drugs rarely, if ever, if ever address the fundamental cause. That is, uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good point. It's, um, you know, I, what I see the same thing happen in medicine uh, that I see happen in the economy as well, which is you have a sure. complex system. And in a complex system, you can't treat one thing without having um, other things happening. And so um, in medicine, it seems like to me, and you can let me know if I'm wrong here, but it seems like to me, the body is a complex system. Mm. And so uh, if I have heartburn, sure, you can give me something for my heartburn, a prescription, but that would probably cause other problems when there's probably just a better natural option that I could get rid of the heartburn. Right. And so by, by trying to treat that one symptom, I actually can cause more problems in my body. And then more drugs that are recommended. I mean, <laughs> as people age, it's so unusual to find someone over the, in their 50s, 60s, and 70s that, that doesn't come in with a shopping bag full of drugs and medication prescribed to them. Yeah. And because we see the same thing in the economy where they're like, oh, well, let's, let's fix this one thing. And then all of a sudden it triggers like, let's, uh, well, people are out of work. So why don't we pay them stimulus to stay home or, you know, to, while they're out of work, but now we have shortages everywhere because nobody wants to go back to work, for example. And then that leads to more things where now well, people aren't getting supplies. And now the manufacturers can't process things. And anyway, it's a, it's a big mess. Um, I'm curious, um, kind of like the financial system and medicine. It seems like uh, my sister, she's an ER doctor. And when she got out of uh, med school, she came home to the family and she's like, stop taking your vitamins and forget your immune system. That's ridiculous. And you just need to take pharmaceuticals. Um, and over the years, you know, somehow she was able to kind of shed that. And now she starts to understand it differently. But it seems like you're in medical school, you're kind of just taught one thing. Mm -hmm. And for most people, they probably are never able to see their way out of that. And then now you go into like this, I don't know if what you would consider it like functional medicine or naturopathic medicine, but well, it's how, neither. how does that it's, process it's, work? Naturopathic is a very specific type of medicine. And actually okay. it's a, it's a certification. They have specific schools and licenses. Okay. So the, the type of medicine that's more broad that I've ascribed to is natural medicine, okay. but it's sometimes called integrative medicine, but I like, I like natural medicine. So in your sister's application, emergency medicine is one of the few legitimate uh, justifications for the conventional medical system, because that's what is designed for acute trauma, emergency right. care, not always used for that, but that they, 
the best, the best application of conventional medicine. So it's easy to get confused, but the whole game changed about 110 years ago when Rockefeller, it gets back to the finances, Rockefeller and Andrew Carnegie uh, put together the Flexner Report in 1910, which essentially eliminated almost every single form of natural medicine because it was a competitor to what then were the emerging class of pharmaceuticals primarily derived from oil petroleum products that Rockefeller was behind. So they, they essentially kicked booted everything out. Doctors lost their licenses and, and they really started to control the curriculum. So you, at that point, so you're right, it is not taught in medical school. There's virtually nothing addressing natural approaches. It's almost all pharmaceutically based. And I've been through four years of medical school and three years of residency training. So I can tell you that with, with confidence. Yeah. So then um, I, I see the same thing in the financial system. Like you, you go through economics classes and then you mm -hmm. get a job working for a financial firm and then you're just kind of a salesperson just selling the products they have. And it's really hard for you to kind of untrain yourself and start looking for those solutions. So um there's and not it's a even lot of harder people. because if you violate that process, then you're criticized and you're really challenged that they can uh, reprimand your license or even take it away if you really go too far out of the system. Mm, yeah, which, which uh, without without go going too deep into what's going on today, I mean, I see reports left and right coming out almost every day about um, reprimanding doctors for going outside of the line. Mm -hmm. And it seems like, um, so going back to uh, my, my personal injury, I got injured on my dirt bike. I hurt my hip dislocated it from a fall, um, a serious fall from a fall. Yeah. I, cra I crashed, <laughs> I crashed on my dirt bike. Um, and, uh, I dislocated it and, um, it, it hurts, right. It hurts. And so, mm -hmm. you know, go to my doctor and, and oh. uh, he's like, well, based off your age and, uh, based off your activity level, um, these are your options, but because of your age, I don't know if a hip replacement's right for you. Let's jump to surgery. <laughs> well, um, I mean, I tore my lab, I tore the labrum in several places and I, I, uh, I dented the bone. I actually, my femur jams hard. I dented it and put a yeah, flat yeah, yeah. spot in anyway. Anyway, but, but my point is, is that he's like, look, based off of you, your age, your activity level, these are options, but you need to consider this because of your age, you need to consider this. If we do this, the risks are here, but if we do this, mm -hmm. the risks are here. What do you think is best? So he gave me a custom, custom solution nice. based that, off of me and my dog. age, and then allowed me to choose what mm -hmm. I thought was the best. And it seems like that's the way medicine has always been done, but that's rapidly changing. Well, it's uncommon. That's a, what you're describing is definitely not typical in my experience. Oh, really? But uh, yeah, you've got, you were able to find a good clinician. So kudos to that. What did you wind up doing? Well, so I ended up just having, uh, we did orthoscopic surgery, which just cleaned out some cartilage. Um, mm -hmm. They cut the scar tissue and re-stitched it up. Um, and there was a little bone spur. And I had that done orthoscopically about six months ago, but it hasn't really gotten better. So yeah, so that, that's a classic illustration because you have to understand that one of the fundamental but foundational principles of health is that your body wants to stay healthy. If you give it what it needs, it's, it's going to move towards health and move, stay away from disease. And you're a pretty healthy guy. You have very healthy practices. So you just need a little push in the right direction. And there's some really powerful interventions that can stimulate heating, healing, like, like PEMF would be one, a pulse electrical magnetic frequencies, uh, and certain types of vibrational therapies that can increase the blood flow, lower the inflammation and cause your body and its intuitive wisdom to, to really identify what is incorrect and needs to be, uh, regenerated to, to move in that direction. And it's just shocking how, when you apply these foundational, simple strategies, how you can almost always recover and repair without any type of surgery, unless it's in the, I mean, if you smashed your pelvis and you had to put the bones back together or something, that's a, that's clearly an indication for emergency orthopedic surgery, but it's uncommon for the chronic nagging pains where you need surgery. Yeah, it really is. I mean, you almost always you can find a, a, a safer solution that doesn't involve a, a surgical intervention. Yeah. And I, I'm certainly for that. So um, going back, so I remember uh, what you're talking about about a hundred years ago, as you said, right, the, the medical system kind of split and mm -hmm. it seemed like the chiropractors have kind of hung on to more of the natural kind of stuff, but then now, all the doctors, there's a, there's a fair percentage, but a lot of them just do crack your bones, but some of the brightest uh, practitioners out there are chiropractors. I mean, the innovators in medicine, some of the things they've come up with are just mind boggling. Yeah. Uh, but, but the, that's not, that's a small subset actually of them in my experience. 
Yeah. But then today we have, uh, everything's kind of gone into the pharmaceutical path, which is then mm-hmm. just prescribe it. Um, one of my, uh, friends in the, in the, in the Bitcoin space, uh, safety Amos, he wrote the book. Uh, oh, the yeah, you standard. know him well. Yeah. I love that guy. I've read both. Yeah. His, well, I haven't read the fiat standard yet, but yeah. So he, uh, he talks about fiat money, fiat food, mm-hmm. and how the fiat money system has actually, uh, corrupted everything, including our food system, because everyone's kind of shortcutting, um, you know, to make more money. And I guess even fiat medical, medical as well, uh, it kind of works the same way. But it seems like today, um, on top of the bad information we've been getting from from our traditional doctors, and maybe it's not their fault, they were just trained wrong. But we're also having massive problems with our food. And so maybe our body doesn't even get the, the nutrients it needs to be in a state that it can heal itself. Yeah, the food is a big issue. And, you know, especially <clears throat> now, and I've been studying food's impact on health for decades. And, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing, Mark, the more you study this, the more you want to begin to understand and realize that it really is pretty simple. It's not that complex. And it's real. And most of the problem results from the perversion in the processing of the food. And one of the biggest issues in my experience, and I'm convinced is the most significant dangerous metabolic poison you could possibly eat. And this may come as somewhat of a surprise, but uh, not to many people, but the devil's in the details on how you apply this is uh, vegetable or seed oils. Sure. Uh, that there is nothing more dangerous that you can, nothing more destructive to your body in producing heart disease, cancer, pre, uh, blindness due to aging, diabetes, obesity, dementia, I mean, that, that is something you almost have to entirely eliminate. And so obvi- the obvious seed oils you don't want to put in your diet, but it's hidden. It's hidden in almost every processed food. It, any, anytime you go to a restaurant, you're going to get a huge dose, because, especially salad dressings or sauces. It's all in there. And you'll be shocked to find the biggest source of seed oils in the American diet. I will, I'll, I'll let you take a guess and see if you can get it. The biggest source for most people. Mm, well, um, I would have guessed salad dressing because I think of a mm-hmm. lot of oil in there. Yeah, um, that, that's a, that, it's, it's, it's up there, but it's not as high as this other source. Mm. Okay, I'll tell you, it's chicken. What? Chicken. I know, chicken. shocking, why, right? Why chicken? Because, you know, I'm, I'm an animal-based guy, more than, much more than a vegetarian guy. And I, the majority of my animal pro- protein comes from animal sources. But the chicken is something, and pork, for similar reasons, who should be avoided. It's because these are uh, animals that are given perverted uh, feed. They mm. essentially give them grains and the grains are loaded with this dangerous omega-6 fat that comprises most of the seed oils, which is a linoleic acid. And you get really high concentrations, maybe 25, 30%. So because people eat so much chicken, so it's so inexpensive and it's perceived as a health food, they have, they get most of the, the, the linoleic acid from that. So, it's, so and, the, and then even other perceived healthy oils like uh, olive oil or uh, avocado oil, uh, most of them, 80% or more are, are adulterated. They're diluted with these seed oils like safflower mm. or sunflower oil. And uh, because it's a lot more, I mean, you would make a lot of money. And I mean, 60 Minutes even did a big expose on this and the mafia. So then, uh, so then co- coconut oil. Well, the, the best, I mean, that's one, it's a vegetable oil too, but it, you're right. There's virtually no linoleic acid in there, but p- probably better option would be beef tallow or beef fat uh, or butter. Um, mm. And it's, and the, almost any processed food is loaded with this stuff and includes cakes and pastries and things, but this, that doesn't mean you can't ever eat those. If you're going to make them yourself or pay someone to make it with butter instead of vegetable oil, then it's going to be great. There's nothing mm-hmm. wrong with butter. And it tastes unless you, unless it you tastes have a really good. severe dairy allergy, of course. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's a far preferred fat source. In fact, I have 14 chickens and I raise them. I, I actually customize their food and I give them about a half a pound of butter every day and put it under their mung bean sprouts, organic mung bean sprouts. But I give wow. them about a gallon of that. So. So um, about seven years ago, I started doing a bulletproof coffee. I know you were just with, recently with Dave Asprey. Yeah, I, ju- um, I just actually talked to him this morning. We, we meet once a week. So he's a good friend. 
So I, I, uh, I started doing intermittent fasting every day, 18 hour fast or more. Um, I haven't even eaten today yet. And it's already almost five 30 where I'm at. Uh, no, it may, well, it may, it's too late. You got to just skip it. <laughs> well, I'll have dinner. I'll, no, I'll have dinner I'm just when, kidding. I'm just kidding. Well, I'll have dinner when we're done. But, um, and, and I, and I, I make my coffee and I put two tablespoons of butter in there. I put a couple mm-hmm. of tablespoons of MCT oil and it's been over seven years now. And I have my, my blood panel done twice a year. And, uh, I mean, my, my cholesterol levels are good. You know, I, um, and so the butter itself and, and a lot of steak, all red meat, <laughs> bacon, mm-hmm. when I can get it, you know, all, lots well, of bacon, avocado, just all limit the bacon. Cause that's pork. Unless that's you pork. can find someone that you know that they're not giving the, those hogs any grains. So it really comes down to then what those animals are eating. A hundred. It makes perfect sense. Shouldn't it? You can't Whatever eat junk they're and eating, have you're good meat. Get. Yeah. 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 And, and herbivores, uh, like cattle or cows or bison or lamb or sheep they have a different pathway. So they have, they have multiple stomachs and, it, and they digest those foods differently and they're not eating grains. I mean, you can feed them grain, you can obviously get grain finished beef, but even if they finish the beef on grain, they're still not going to have as much linoleic acid as, as a chicken or a hog. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. We, uh, we found a place here in Puerto Rico that we get some grass fed beef from, and uh, we've been, we've been eating that mostly. And it's, it's a little different, you know, the well, textures. A, a yeah. Just make different. sure it's grass finished too. Cause that's a common mistake. It's actually a, the, biggest mistake in whole foods they advertise it as grass fed but it's the grass finish that you want because yeah. it or pasture raised i think that's what they use at whole foods i was just watching a video and they say they they claim it's pasture raised and it's true but they don't tell you that the last three months they're eating grains so i want to jump been to uh, a couple other topics one i want to talk about censorship um mm-hmm. because this is a big topic that you've been under fire from, and it's a big topic that I'm passionate about because I'm really trying to increase everybody's freedom and health is part of that. Um, so I want to talk about that now uh, real quick. I do want to plug that I am having a live event coming up in Miami and I want to help people learn how to build more wealth, grow more wealth, keep their assets, but also their health, their freedom. And of course you, Dr. Mercola are going to come speak. And so everybody should check that out. There's going to be a link down below. Um, but before we jump into the censorship issue, um, just give us, uh, I don't know, this may not be so easy, but um, get, give us some easy practical tips that most people could do to increase their health, especially given where we're at today with our food quality going down and all the other factors that we have. And I know, uh, you know, what, what the 80, 20 rule, what are the, what are the 20%? Yeah, yeah, I, I already can... gave you, I perceive one of the most important rules. So the vegetable, uh, but, the, but you, the, the seed oil, but I can continue on that, or I can go into the censorship to give you a to answer to that question. Cause there's two different, two different questions. So, so the, just, if we just look, work at eliminating seed oil, that's probably one of the biggest needle movers that we can. That do. is probably the biggest in my viewpoint. And the, the, the single biggest intervention you can use to radically reduce your risk for every single major cause of chronic disease, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, dementia, o- obesity. That's the biggest mover. So, okay. yeah. And Good. then the intermittent fasting is another powerful intervention. Although technically what you're describing is, it, I mean, it's a form of intermittent fasting, but it's time restricted eating. Uh, but that coffee you're having in the morning is a source of calories. So that qualifies as a meal. I mean, that you, you're getting about 400 calories depending on how much MCT and butter you're using. Yeah, so so I've, I've I've had this conversation with a lot of people. The way that I understood it, and correct me, because I know you know Dave Asprey and you know more than I do. Well, I, um, I actually but, wrote a book on it too. It's called Fat okay. Fuel. So it was a pretty okay. Pretty so you did. So, it was uh, the number I've, one book sold in America the, the week it was out. So, so I know there's like uh, fast mimicking diets, you know, and things. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's Walter Longo's work. Which right, uh, Longo's yeah. work. And so um, I Walter, thought so, with a V. <laughs> well, I thought since there was no protein or carbs then the body can maintain its fasting state. Well, the majority of the benefits as a, as a result of its fasting state can be achieved. And that really is suppression of uh, this important metabolic vector called mTOR, mammalian target rapamycin. So you're right. If you don't have protein or carbs, you're not as likely to activate mTOR. So you'll keep that low, but you still is it's still not fasting technically because you you are not fasting if you're eating calories. Now it's not a big bump and you're probably getting most of the benefits. And it's a and that's what Dave does too. I mean uh, he's been to my house before, so I've, he has the coffee in the morning. And I've made it for him in the past, and you know. He, and he, will that will that prevent my body from going into autophagy? No, it's usually it's when you activate autophagy that, that that's the trigger for stopping autophagy. And autophagy is a very powerful mechanism. 
Yeah. Right. So, so I'm asking, does that, if I if I drink the if I drink the bulletproof coffee, probably, does that prevent? Probably will cut it down a bit, but not not significantly. But it, okay. it is it is a cut. It's not the same as total fasting. So typically, time restricted eating is defined as no calories in a six or eight hour window. I mean, all your calories are in a six or eight hour window. Right. So you're essentially do, what you're doing, and you've got you've got two two very small, you got one small into, into a day you're eating. You're, like, you're, you're almost an OMAD. Today, you'll be an OMAD, which is one meal a day, right? which I don't recommend for most people because it's too restrictive, especially as you get older. You, you really don't want, I, I would, would not go below six hour day window. I, mean, just I, be, I don't, I don't normally, it's just today was yeah. a very busy day, but also yeah, yeah. sometimes yeah, when I'm traveling, change. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes That's when I'm traveling, I eat breakfast too, you know? So like, I, yeah, yeah, I yeah. like to mix it up a little bit. You, yeah. That is perfect. Listen to your body, listen, uh, honor your schedule. And, and that's what you want. You don't want it. You want to get into a cycle that is mm -hmm. congruent with your, your rhythm. So you don't want to go with some preconceived idea of what your body needs, but you definitely want to switch it up. And that's a pop or cyclical. It's like, it's like cyclical ketogenesis. Yeah. Now, um, just for everybody listening that doesn't know what we're talking about, autophagy is a, 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 a Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'll, I'm going to try to summarize this and maybe I'll butcher it. But autophagy is a point where your body goes into a state that it, it starts to kind of kill, kill off and get rid of the old cells that are kind of broken down, straggling. And then it, it uh, I think it almost makes the cells like shed their, uh, shed their layer and get rehardened and, and strong again. And uh, no, 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 it, it nope. actually targets them. <laughs> I should have asked you then. <laughs> yeah. Metabolically it, it tags them. And then they're they're You have cells within your body, which I don't see this tag and to self-destruct them like lysosomes and such. And once they're down, then it also activates a signal to repair and regenerate. So you generate new cells and it kind of depends on the cells. And there's another interesting strategy, which is a high level. And many of your viewers are probably ready for this, but if you're, if you're overweight, you know, and you're still taking a lot of vegetable oil, you better start there first, but there's something aligned with this, which is uh, um, sauna. So if you can do regular sauna is a powerful intervention and the studies done in Finland. show the dry saunas, uh, decrease mortality, like 40, 50%. And part wow, of the reason, really? part of the reason they do that, they generate something called a heat shock protein. Uh, and the heat shock proteins are exactly what you described. They take autophagy to the next level because they also do a process called folding, refolding. When your body makes proteins from scratch, de novo, uh, and right off the bat, 30% of them are misfolded. And when they're not folded correctly, because of this complex th three-dimensional structure, if it's, doesn't, it's not folded perfectly, it will not work. That's just the way the deal works. So it, you have to refold, they, you have to have a system that allows it to repair that and refold it. So the heat shock proteins do that. And if it's too damaged, it will target it for destruction, just like autophagy. So powerful intervention. Plus, if you have a, a, an infection coming down, it, 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 you're you typically a good sauna. You're going to raise your te body temperature, core body temperature by six to seven degrees. Like when I go on my sauna, my temperature is 97.3. And when I come out, it's like 104.5. Wow. So, uh, and that, and that's exactly what your body does when you're sick, you get a fever, right? Why does your body have a fever? Because it, you know, these, these pathogens do not like elevated temperatures. So it's a powerful intervention and, you know, I, and you could do it every day, but probably it's like, you know, like what you're doing with the time restricted and you want to, cycle it so don't it's some of the fins do it every day but i think there's some problems because you sweat so much when I mean, if you're in a good sauna you're going to sweat a quart a quart and a half maybe a half a gallon of water wow depending on how long you're in there so along with and and, it, and it, the other benefit of sauna is it really it it removes the toxins from your body it's one of the most effective ways to remove toxins nothing comes close to it um especially if you combine it with some binders but it, it's such a powerful strategy to stay healthy, which is one of your initial questions. So an advanced so, so, strategy for sure, for sure. So limit seed oils, uh, think about some fasting to get trigger autophagy. Well, time restricted eating. Time restricted eating, like yeah, I six do. Six to eight hour and, window. Yeah. And it's much easier than you think. Uh, and then, oh, and then, but if, and you're, if, you if, if you're over 12 hours, just do it slowly. You don't jump to six. You go to 11 and a half, 11, 10 and a half right. times. You know, just do it slowly and you adapt to it and it'll be real easy. Yeah. And then, and then if you can find a sauna, sometimes jump in the sauna as well. One more question about this before we kind of move on. Um, also I've heard now, um, I've done some IV therapy, different minerals, my uh, things like that. Mm -hmm. And they have one that I recently found out about. I, I forget if it's called like NAV or something like that. Oh, it, I, I, I am a, I've studied NAD very deeply. I've read hundreds and hundreds of the papers and I really, really one of the experts in it to help 
translate that literature. So I've got some really good news for you. Uh, it is a very important biomolecule, not as important as I previously thought it was. And I, I've interacted with David Sinclair. In fact, I was just with him at an event in Boston a few weeks ago, and he's really the primary person or researcher that brought this to attention because we've known about NAD since 1908 or 05. Sir Arthur Hayden first discovered it. And if you ever have taken biochemistry, it's, it's essential for the electron transport chain. It's, it's transfers electrons through so in the, in the in the citric acid cycle so that you can create ATP. But uh, Sinclair in his lab at MIT uh, in the late 90s figured out that it's also a fuel for the sirtuins and sirtuins are longevity proteins. So that's what helped to gain prominence. And there's been a lot of talk about it. A lot of people are taking NADP cursors. I don't know if you are. Are you taking them? No. Okay, good. Well, don't, especially you. Uh, they're useful because as the, it's really, you have a dramatic decline in NAD as you age. But what I've learned and, and even I, I confronted Sinclair with this at a meeting in Boston recently, but there's a, a specific enzyme that is responsible for salvaging your NAD because once it's broken down, it goes to nicotinamide and you have this enzyme called NAMPT and that's responsible for catalyzing. It's the bottleneck. This is the enzyme that's, that is the rate limiting factor for, for you recycling your NAD because 99% of it gets recycled. So this enzyme becomes weakened and damaged and doesn't work as effectively as you get older. But there's one simple intervention that will make it 10 to 30 times more effective than any NAD precursor, any NAD precursor. And do you know what that intervention is? You're going to love it because you do it. Fasting. No, no, no fasting. Oh. Actually, fasting will increase it. You are correct. Fasting increases NAD, but not as much as this other intervention. You're totally right. It does increase. But it usually it's a few day fast and you're not going to do that type of fasting regularly, but you will increase NAD levels when you fast. No question. Okay. So what is it? Exercise. But oh. intense exercise, especially like resistance training, uh -huh. and when you when you combine it with blood flow restriction, oh my gosh, your your NAD levels go through the roof, thirty times higher. You're it because of, you're activating this enzyme in the MPT. So, when I when I was reading the benefits of that 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 IV bag, the NAD, um, it sounded like it was almost kind of putting your body into this autophagy thing. Is it somewhat the same, or are they totally different? No, it's different. I mean, it's that's an if you've had that, that's an expensive intervention. Typically, especially a liter, a gram or so of NAD is about a thousand bucks. It's administered over a thousand over about a few hours. Uh, so, I mean, it's useful as helpful for especially for people with certain drug dependencies, but. I think there's a easier, less expensive, simpler intervention. See, just like conventional medicine does, and they have these expensive approaches that, that, that do relieve symptoms. You know, natural medicine has the same thing. They have a lot of expensive interventions that aren't necessary. You can, there's a lot simpler, less expensive strategies to achieve the same result. Okay. So um, that's enough of the geek talk that probably most people aren't into. <laughs> uh, move, moving on to something else that is probably more important and more near and dear to everybody's heart is uh is the topic of censorship um and and and, and specifically around uh information but especially specifically around medical information um a couple things so um i retweeted a thing yesterday um and it was about google now says they're going to um they're going to ban everything or stop uh sending traffic to things that um go against scientific consensus <laughs> And um, I've also seen things, also other things that also talk about um, shutting down doctors who go against consensus. Mm -hmm. And so I just thought, well, first of all, science isn't fact, right? Science is always it's, about it's more consensus, right? And um, but if uh, if the Wright brothers would have listened to the consensus, man never would have flown. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, they had to, everybody told them it was never going to be possible, but yet they went out and made a plane and they flew. And so like, if we're required, if, if consensus now is fact, then we can never go against that. I mean, what is that going to do to society or, or progress? Yeah. So, I mean, it's, a, it's your definition of consensus too. It's like, who are you relying on to, <laughs> to gather the data? Well, and great, are you suppressing or censoring other participation in this discussion and dialogue, and which is precisely what's occurring now. So. Uh, Interestingly, many of your readers may not know that I was identified in late July as the number one source of misinformation in the United States and the world about, about the, the, what we're going through now. And because um, they identified 12 of us, the misinformation dozen we were called, 
And supposedly there was a dark money group called Arabella uh, or uh, called CCDH, which is funded by Arabella Advisors, only spun up a year and a half ago. And they came up with this statistic that this 12 people were responsible for two thirds, two thirds, Mark, of all the misinformation on Facebook and social media. And when Facebook did their analysis, they said it was less than a half of 1%, less mm-hmm. than a half of 1%. So they, they, they were, and none of the, I mean, all the, this is a major leading art, front page article on the New York Times, uh, spread by almost all the major media in the US. Uh, and, you know, so I was like vilified. And then CNN could, had to get in. They, they did a seven minute expose on me. They, they uh, essentially, uh, 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 I guess I forget that word. They, they stalked me at my office in my home and it finally found me at my be- at, at the beach I go to and walk on every day. So um, <laughs> it was interesting. So anyway, that's been the challenge. And, and just recently, I think last week, uh, we've never had any strikes against us this year because we don't post anything on YouTube that violates the policy because we know what the rules are. They'll, they'll just take us out. So uh, they decided to change the rules in the morning. They said, if you've ever put anything down on vaccines, we're going to move your site. So they took me and Bobby Kennedy out. Um, and uh, actually, I'm friends with Bobby, too. He's uh, he wrote the forward to my book. Oh, it was interesting. And when CNN did their, their expose and they said, he's got a book. It was number one on Amazon. But we're not going to tell you the name of it. So that all that exposure made the book number one for like almost a week. So we, oh. we, we ra- radically increased sales. And and, and uh, I, I remember. uh so there's a saying that says um, you can, uh, oh, ripping out a man's tongue does not prove him wrong, mm-hmm. right? And so um, I believe that good ideas win because they're good ideas, they're better. And I believe that through free speech, we would find the truth. Um, I suppose if I want to, you know, in a debate, I should know my opponent's argument better than they do. And so I suppose that there's some truth about um, you know, disinformation, you know, purposeful lies could be harmful, dangerous, sure. I suppose. But I guess uh, the problem is, is who gets to decide what's disinformation? Mm-hmm. I mean, what, what what would you say about that? That's exactly the crux of the issue. You know, you've got these people who have determined themselves to be the self, the self-appointed authorities, many of which have no experience in this area. Like you've got Fauci, who's a, a sociopathic criminal, uh, and I know that sounds harsh, but if, if you read Bobby Kennedy's new book, uh, The Truth About Tony Fauci, which comes out in November, you'll, I think you would not dispute that in, in any way. Well, we know or. even just Rand Paul has come out with all the evidence. Oh, yeah, Rand Paul's been going against the U.S. He just, government. And- he just blasted the, the head of the Health and Human Services last week and it just crippled him. I mean, both of these guys, they have no clinical experience. It's got the head of Health and Human Services who's like, vilified all these people going against these narratives um, has he doesn't even have a science degree he has no uh professional qualifications to come to these judgments not yeah. that you need that but he's making wrong decisions and and he's spreading misinformation but but the crux of it is that you have people like this who are are essentially the the arbiters of what is right and what is wrong yeah. So, I mean, how do you, how would you think of balancing that? Like I said, for me, I'm for free speech. Um, is, could people say things that are potentially harmful? Maybe, but I think um, through discovery, we would find out who those people are and it would be better to know. Um, but at the same time, I guess I could see the argument that maybe that immense information is bad. Do you think it's best just to like, let it be out there, let people there, there's debate not, it? There, there's not a micro doubt in my mind that, that, that you should not be censoring it unless it's actually... I mean, there's few, I mean, it's like uh, the ch- ch- p- pedophilia or something really outrageous where people are being harmed and uh, absolutely. So there's offensive. a few things that we could all agree. Yeah, but that, th- that everyone agrees on this is that it's been time honored and it's, it's nothing new. But once you go out that, I think no matter how much you disagree with that thought, concept, or speech, it should be left out there because. The, the public will figure it out. The public is the the crowd is smarter than the than the than the few. There's no question. Mm. Consistently, almost every research study shows us they eventually yeah. figure it out. 
Yeah, there's been numerous uh, examples of that, like at a state fair, um, like guess the weight of the mm-hmm. bowl. Sure. And everybody 100%. puts a, everybody puts a guess in. And when they take the crowd and they average it out, they can get almost exactly how many jelly beans in a jar, et cetera. And so to your point, the, the, the crowd is uh, crowdsourced information can be powerful. Now, um, you have been doing this for a really long time. You've written mm-hmm. many books. You uh, rub shoulders with your friends with some of the brightest people in the space. Um, you're an expert. I would consider you an expert. Um, you've been doing this, I think, for 25 years. Now, recently, um, you came out uh, publicly saying that you had to delete 25 years, I believe you said 25 years of your files, mm-hmm. and you had to remove them all. And now you've changed the way that you send out information where now it's like time and it's time stamped and this and that. Um, and I remember seeing that. And, and I think <laughs> I tweeted it out. And that's where I kind of used that that quote about you can rip out a man's tongue. Um, but I don't know why you deleted 25. I, I, I imagine you came under some some heavy pressure. Well, um, but yeah. couldn't you have just moved those somewhere else? Oh, sure, we could have. But uh, as it was a it was a very calculated response. As this occurred right when that CNN video came out in the New York Times exposure, and I was I was pretty much in the news big time at the end of July and early August. So. Uh, I created a video which was which explains this, but the, the crux of it is is that we, as a result of that ex- media exposure, it was good for us. But there was some there's a lot of of people who are not psychologically there. So we we had a lot of threats, very serious threats against me personally, against my business. Uh, so we we had to address that, and we felt this was the the most effective way to do that, and that would take some of the pressure off of us. So we removed. 25 years, so over 15,000 articles we removed from the site. They're not deleted, they're still available. Uh, I mean, not they're not going, we didn't burn them, okay? Oh, okay. So we're probably going to bring them back early next year in a different format that provides us like a membership association that's really inexpensive that can provides different levels of protection that aren't available uh, in a free site. So probably on a sub stack it's gonna be. So we'll have almost everything back and that it will be the case. So, but we just had to take the pressure off of us because we were just, I mean, there were, there were articles being written in some of the most scientific prestigious publication in the world, like science and nature uh, that were calling for cyber terrorism threats against me. Wow. You know, um, one thing I learned from my new, uh, my, my, my longtime mentor and now my friend, uh, Robert Kiyosaki, mm-hmm. Um, he was teaching, uh, the game cash flow down in Australia before the game was out and, um, they were, had these investment clubs and they're teaching the game and, uh, they became under heavy attack, um, from some news organizations saying they were running some cult and this and that. And so they decided to make the game. And then he wrote the book and he told me, he said, you have to have an artifact. So the book is like an artifact and the game is an artifact. And like, Nobody can say the game is something other than what the game shows. So thinking about it like that, I would almost think like people could make up all kinds of accusations against you, but the proof was there. All the documents were there and any, they could say it, but the reality is anybody could go read it and find out it wasn't true. So yeah, almost yeah. removing it almost could make it worse. Well, see, there's an other issue is that they change laws all the time. Just as I explained previously, we wake up one morning and all of a sudden YouTube's changes policy and my, my, my site is banned. I mean, I'm right. my channel, I'm deep platform f- just because they changed the rules. Same thing. When you've got 15,000 articles up over 25 years, I mean, it's like a quarter of a century of content, right? We, and we don't, we go back and we look at those articles every week. Obviously they're just up there. So uh, another concern was that they're going to change the law or something. They're going to extract this old article because our site's not even up on archive.org. I mean, it's that with, with the crawl, it's gone from there too. So they can't use any of that against us to, for any federal, yeah, you know, anything they want to do to destroy us. Cause they're, yeah. believe me, I, I, I'm a credible threat to them. At least they perceive it. I'm, that's not my subjective impression. Otherwise, why would they do this? I mean, they're targeting me almost pretty specifically, Bobby Kennedy too. And but that's pretty much it. You know, they're, yeah. they're trying to vilify me, and they, and they, and to a certain measure, they've been successful. You know, there yeah. are a, a large number of people because if you look at me up, I mean, Google took me out of their search engine two years ago. So. Uh, you know, you can't find anything but bad information about me because they, they control the search engine. And that's one of the Google is one is a perniciously 
evil organization. I shouldn't use evil, but they're, they're, they're really behind a bunch of this because they could, they, 93% of the searches of the world are done on, on this search engine right. and, and they manipulate the information you're going to get. So, you know, good percentage of it is solid information, you know, like in how to kill certain pests in your garden or something. There's no reason to censor that or manipulate it. But what, what for, for some of these other social issues, there's a huge percentage and they, they've been shown. I've, I've interviewed Robert Epstein who's a sociologist at Harvard. And, you know, he's done studies showing how they manipulated elections and 25% of elections in the world, they manipulate through, through, yeah. through their search results. So they, they are part of the reason why this is the most effective brainwashing propaganda campaign in the history of mankind, largely through as a result of Google. I mean, it's some of the other social media platforms, too, yeah. but Google is the biggest criminal. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. You said, don't use that word against Google, Google, but um, in their, in their values or their, yeah, their yeah. motto. Well, that was, was that Don't was the original evil. ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They they, yeah. they abandoned that, I think, over a decade ago. Yeah, they, they abandoned it. They abandoned it. Um, so the problem is, um, you know, um, when I'm talking to people and they say, well, all the scientists agree that this is happening or all the doctors agree mm -hmm. this is happening. Um, but the reality is, no, that's not the case. And actually, lots of scientists have come out and said it's not. Or lots of doctors have come out and said this. I've seen, you know, now there's like... Um, um, you know, 9,000 signatures that these doctors have come out or, and said this or whatever. Uh, but it, because it's being centered, censored, then the people aren't um, able to see that. And I'm, I'm guessing it's just really difficult for the average person. I think the problem used to be getting information. Um, today, the problem is maybe too much information. So how do you discern it? Mm -hmm. And then even now, more importantly, if one side is kind of being erased. So um, it's, it's a complex issue. I get it. But like, um, I guess, what can the average person do um, to one, be able to discern the information better and then um, find the right information? It's a great question. And I'm not sure that I have the authoritative answer, but I can offer some suggestions uh, with respect to my experience has been, and that is to uh, identify people who you believe who are experts in the field and follow what they're, they're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, Many times it's not going to be on a, a typical social media platform. Many of these accounts are banned on, on Facebook and Twitter and even YouTube. So you have to really go to their site. And th there are, I'm sure you're familiar with something called RSS feeds, which makes it a bit easier. Yep. So you can collect all of this and one information in one sec. But if just, I think it's important to understand that you really cannot trust almost any search engine, even the non Google search engines, because it, 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 they have developed the most effective and sophisticated search engine tool that ever existed. And almost every other alternative search engine uses Google as its, as its search <laughs> data structure. Yeah. So there's no alternative and it would cost bi billions, hundreds of billions to create an alternative. I, I use DuckDuckGo. And I, yeah, and I but it's, that results. uses Google. Yeah, but it does get different results than Google sometimes. Yeah, but. yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's, the, the benefit of that is that you don't. You, the, so, uh, the primary benefit is that most most of these other search engines don't destroy your privacy like Google does. Right, yeah. and then uh, the other thing I would say I would add on to that is just um, <laughs> I like to say on my videos almost everything you've learned is wrong, and so like always um, approaching things from uh, maybe what we'd call first principles, mm -hmm. um, and 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 really taking things more basic, and so like uh, kind of what we started out talking about, which you said, which is if you give your body what it needs and you put it into a situation, it can take care of itself. It can heal itself, which is almost kind of like flat earthers, I guess today. Um, but, but I start from there. And so then um, right off the bat, do you need to be adding more things into your body? Right. That's, a, I think that's probably a good place to start. So anybody that defaults to that naturally, you might probably question that. Um, well, but, but still, it's important to understand when you're trying to find another viewpoint that the typical gateway into doing that is YouTube and, and Google right? yeah. search engines. There's no other way around it. So you have to find alternative strategies. And that's yeah. the challenge. That's the absolute challenge. So it, it, regard, it requires an updated, more sophisticated uh, approach than we could have used five years ago. Five years ago, that would have went perfectly because Google wasn't censored, but it is now. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. Good point. And then, and then I always just ask myself when I'm evaluating any piece of information and uh, because of the videos that I make, people send me all kinds of stuff and a lot of it's very sensational and I don't just go share it. And so a lot of times I'll look at it and go, 
you know, is this true? And, and so sometimes this bias makes me think everything is a, is a conspiracy. Um, but one of the first questions I would just typically ask is like, who's benefiting from this? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, that, that's a know. good start. Good start. Yeah. So, um, all right. Well, so it's a tough world. I think that you gave us some good information. One, uh, cut out seed oils, um, do some uh, time um, eating and that time restricted benefit eating. Your, Exercise, huh? exercise, exercise, honor your yep. circadian rhythm. And with the, the, the caveat with time restricted eating uh, is to s- seek to have your last meal at least three hours before bedtime, because there's a special type of regeneration that occurs, activated autophagy that is, is impaired if you eat right before you go to bed. Mm, great point. Um, and then, and then we talked about censorship and just the importance of, uh, of, uh, looking at the information that you get, get it from trusted sources that you've gathered, uh, friends that are like-minded maybe suggest, um, and just try not to trust everything that you see on Google or YouTube. Um, one more thing I want to talk about, and then we'll probably uh, wrap this up because I know we've gone a long time, but another, another big thing that is super important to me, uh, and I, and, uh, they say, you don't know what you have until it's gone. So we, we, uh, this year moved from California to, to Puerto Rico. And for the first like six, seven months, like we didn't meet anybody and like having a lacking a community around me of like-minded people was so difficult. And, uh, and I just, you know, you don't know what you have till it's gone. And mm-hmm. so now I have this like new understanding of the importance of having a, a community mm-hmm. around you, which is one reason why I'm, I'm having this live event. I want everyone to come and kind of meet new people that are like them and build, build some relationships and friendships. Um, and so that's important. I know you're working on maybe building a community as well. I mean, yeah, but that's, it- that's, that's, that's confidential <laughs> okay it's confidential but I, but, I agree with that i don't want to spread that but, out. but speak but i mean just speak to the power of a community and, and being yeah. around like-minded people that eat, have healthy habits and, yeah there's no uh, question i i'm i'm convinced that uh you know we're not we're the country isn't heading towards good state i think things are getting worse and worse every week so uh, you know eventually things will devolve so there's there's got to be in my view, there's got to be a group of people who understand the truth, who are really aligned with this is not brainwashed by the propaganda that can sort of rescue things when things collapse. So that's, yeah. that's my approach. And it's a hundred percent. There is no Lone Ranger is going to fix this thing. You're going to need a group right. of them really, really bright that's my people point. to support, yeah. support each other and provide the resources you need to sustain, sustain and develop the creativity to find a solution. Yeah. And, that, and that's exactly what I'm talking about. I do believe that there's massive hope and prosperity. I believe we get through this and it's better. Um, but the next couple of years are going to be difficult mm-hmm. and trying to do it on your own is going to be very difficult. And so having that community, that support system around you is going to be important. Uh, I had to learn the hard way. And so I'm working to build that back up. And yeah. so um, anyway, uh, come to the live event, uh, hear Dr. Joe McCorla speak, hear me speak. Uh, Should be fun. Friends and build, build a community around you. We'll put a link down below. Um, since you've been pretty much eliminated out of Google, <laughs> um, is there anywhere that uh, we should go find you uh, directly? Yeah, your website and, and, or? and most all, yeah, I have a website. It's my last name, Mercola, M E R C O L A dot com. We have four articles that are live because they disappear after 48 hours. So uh, it's a newsletter free and really is pretty cutting edge. We, we call the, the best, most recent information out there. And I do in, interviews with some of the brightest, sharpest people out there. Uh, at least once or twice a week. So uh, it's a f- free, great resource, Mercola.com. So great. All right. Well, we're going to have all that linked down below. And uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Mark. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, hit the like and subscribe button so you can get more videos that can help you and your family take control of your health.